what, one second, bro. This is what happens when you're doing live with the kids at home. <laughs> you got the kids. How many kids have you got, Umar? I've got two kids, mashallah. Two kids, mashallah. mashallah. So moving on. So, you, you know, you, you, you're in America. You had this whole lifestyle you experience. Is it a bit like the Korean stores where you see in the films? Is, is, yeah, you know what? Like it is. It is. It is. But I was in the east side, and that's predominantly a, a Caucasian area. And you yeah. know, for example, so but when I went to the west side, which is the African American area, because yeah. you know, there's a, there's a, there's a lot of um, the, uh, you know, the African American community are, are treated really unfairly in America. We just don't yeah, really yeah, understand absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know, and uh, you you really understand what they're going through when you go there and you see it. Like, yeah. and, and and there's even there's even a divide amongst the poor Caucasian people and the poor African American people. So wow. the poor African American people are much poorer than the Caucasian uh, people, yeah. and that already that shows so. you how unfair it is. That, that makes no sense. How can Nominal. you have a how can you be unfair in a divide in being poor? If that makes sense. So it was it was it was it yeah. was like the movies, bro. It was oh, it was bad, man. It's like America yeah. is great. Yeah, no, you're right. It, I've got a friend out there, and literally, uh, if you're rich, you'll get away with any crime. The prisons are full of poor people and black people and and Hispanics and that, but there's really a, a grave injustice really there. Sad. It's it's unbelievable. Really, it's really sad. Yeah. It's really sad. Um, just a, a, bit, a bit about your music now. Um, you sing in English, obviously, but Urdu, Arabic, Punjabi, you hit those Bollywood tunes. Hamdir <laughs> 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 uh, bin and all that, you know, and why do you do all the languages? Is your audience, um, obviously it's international, but is it something because of your personal upbringing? Did you watch Bollywood when you were a kid? Or what oh, was yes. the reason? So, so when I grew up, I grew up. I, I was, a, I was, a, I was a Bollywood buff man. Like, um, you know, um, obviously, you know, our parents, you know, they used to love their their Bollywood. That's just the honest truth of it. And you know, my my mum was we used to watch Bollywood. My father used to watch it. So obviously, yeah. when they got older, they stopped watching it just because they got old and they didn't probably want to watch it. But me, for example, it was a big part of my my upbringing. Bollywood, like many South Asians in England or or, or around the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 also for me, why I do different languages because you know our religion. Subhanallah is it, 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 it's not defined by color or or language or anything like. There's mm. Muslims of all kinds, mashaAllah. So I wish that I could sing in every language, you know, that wow. I could I could touch the Muslim audience. And you know, for me, it's it's important to give the audience, you know, mashaAllah. There's over 1.5 billion. Some people say two billion yeah. Muslims around the world. Yeah. So as an artist, it's my job to try to cater to 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 them, you know, for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it, man. I enjoy yeah. singing. And the reason I even do covers, there's a there's this kind of misconception sometimes people have why I do yeah. covers. My bro, um, I'm a simple brother. Uh, my my mom, my mother and father were, you know, lower middle class. Mm. You know, my dad came here in the 60s from Pakistan. He had three yeah. jobs. And my mum was, you know, used to work in a factory. We're, we're normal people and we were we, we were not raised with money. And so for me, so for me, when I came into Nasheeds, nobody supported me financially. Mm. So I, I have I, I didn't have money. So for me, the only reason I do covers is because covers is like a marketing tool for me. Because yeah. I know that the majority of Muslims, unfortunately, listen to music. Yeah. So if I do. do a song, if I do a song, which is your favorite Bollywood song, and yeah. you listen to my version, which is the Muslim version, yeah. you don't know about Umar Isa, yeah. you want to come and listen to it. Then you'll be like, oh, let me hear this guy's other stuff. You know? Yeah. Because I've only yeah. got, I've done, I've got 40 tracks released, right, publicly. And I've only got seven of those. Like, only seven of those are covers, Alhamdulillah. So wow, I did say for me, like, it's just a marketing tool because I don't have the money. You know, my bro, yeah. the sad thing yeah. is that no one, no one has ever mm. supported me. You know, when you do halal, bro, yeah. that's when uh -huh. you understand that life becomes hard, bro. Bro, like 10 that. years I've been doing youth work. No one wants to pay for youth work. No one wants to pay for the good music. No one wants to pay for good Muslim media. You know that, you know, the yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah. matters and we want to make a change. No one supports it. You know, and we have what some the brothers said yesterday on on the chat we had yesterday, that the Muslim community raises half a billion pounds in charity every year, yeah, and how much of that goes right. to people like you, uh, you know, to inspire and to motivate the youth and the the mess we're in. You know what mess we're in with the youth, the crisis yeah. that we've got with the youth. You know that I know that. I'm yeah. just going to talk about some of your tunes. Like uh, you did the Titanic cover recently, not really recently, um, and that that was phenomenal because. I, I am I right in saying you're improving over time, because yeah yeah I'm the yeah I'm the I can see that I can see from your early days your music mashallah is getting better and better, uh, and I remember I texted you about um, 
the Craig David coming. I said, don't worry about what people say. <laughs> I don't even remember that. It was, everyone was good. I was getting messages. What's this guy doing to our Dean? Why did he do a Craig David cover, even though that song was quite shameless or promiscuous? What, what was the reason for that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, days, um, something like that. Cool? Yeah, yeah. For for me, yeah. for me, you know the thing is, I had that track recorded like for two years now, and okay. for me, and I had it on my mobile. And for me, it was just, it just literally was a little bit of banter, and it was yeah. a little bit of fun, and it actually was a re reality of how I actually got like I got married to my wife like within a month. Alhamdulillah, meeting her, but That's meeting her. Yeah. You know what I? You know, for me, it was a little bit of banter. But the the thing is that you know, unfortunately, my brother, the truth of the matter is that. You know, Muslims sometimes are, are outraged by the wrong things. Yeah. Like we're not we're not outraged when uh, our Muslim brothers who are Muslims and openly Muslims who flaunt their wealth or flaunt their this and flaunt that. They don't say anything yeah. about that. But when a brother who's actually working for the dean does anything, then we pick them. I get criticized for everything. And I'm not joking to you, bro. Mm. Non-Muslims around me always say, why are you even taking that for? Like they're yeah. baffled that I don't do anything like. Alhamdulillah, you know, I don't do anything. And these guys know artists who drink alcohol, they fornicate, they yeah. do drugs and all that, and they're celebrated in society. Yeah. But Muslims yeah. will, however, nitpick at the mm. littlest things. And to be honest with you, no one has ever come to my face and said anything about the seven days thing. In fact, yeah. no one has ever in my face come up to me and said, oh, Marisa, well, why did you do that? Which mm. shows that, you know, at the end of the day, there's, yeah, there, they won't there say to people, you. Mm. online people will say a lot of things and at the end of the day, and... and yeah. I, it doesn't, it doesn't bother me because I know that it was a, it was banter, it was a little bit of fun, and at the end of the day, we're we're, we're allowed to have fun. Subhanallah, like it makes no yeah. sense for me that you know when people say certain things, but uh, alhamdulillah, I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was really fun. I still I'm still waiting for Craig David to. I hope that Craig David hears. <laughs> he inspired me. To, he inspired me to sing when I was when I was in in Jahiliya, yeah, so. no, yeah, absolutely. And uh, what's your favorite song from all your songs? Um, my favorite song, Nasheed, is a, is a Nasheed called Alhamdulillah. Um, it was basically a collaboration, not a collaboration, I recorded and I gave it to the Merciful Servant channel on, on yep. YouTube. And yep. basically for me, it's so important because my brother, like, you know, when you grow up and you understand that what we're going through a lot of hardship right now with this COVID-19 thing. And you have to sit back and really say Alhamdulillah for everything because there are brothers and sisters out there who don't have the, even don't even have the luxury of what we have where we're just sitting at home. Mm. And, 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 and yeah. you know, we get shopping delivered to us. Or yeah, we have whatever. We're so blessed and we don't even understand. Even in a pandemic, we're blessed. And we have to say alhamdulillah for alhamdulillah. everything. So that machine was for me to just say, you know, thank you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like, you are so kind, my king. You know, I, I rely on you. I, 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 everything I do is for you, alhamdulillah. My, Allah, you are my master, my majesty. And I just want to say alhamdulillah for everything, everything. You know, and, and it's very important that good and bad, we say Alhamdulillah. So that was my favorite. You say that a lot, don't you? You say my king, you say my Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have this amazing affection that you show openly. Yeah. And I see it in your messaging. I see it in what you say. Yeah. 